Welcome to the channel. Thank you so, so much for checking out today's video. In today's video, we're going to be checking out the GM 6S 5.5 inch external camera monitor from Godox. Let's get straight into it. So first off, let's see what we get inside the box. So we get the instruction manual and here's the monitor itself. Get a cold shoe monitor mount, a full size HDMI cable, a micro HDMI to full size HDMI cable and a mini HDMI to full size HDMI cable. We also get a sunshade and it's worth noting that the mount for the sunshade can be removed from the monitor. So that's everything inside the box. Let's take a closer look at the monitor itself. And on the top left of the monitor, we get four customizable function buttons. And on the top right of the monitor, we get a return button, a menu button, and one additional customizable function button. On the right side of our monitor, we get a quarter inch mounting point, a USB-C port, and our power on and off button. On the bottom of the monitor, we get DC input, DC output, full size SD card slot, and also a quarter inch mounting point. On the left side of the monitor, we get a remote cable output, a headphone output, HDMI input, and a HDMI output. In hand, the monitor feels exceptionally well made with toughened plastic, metal, and glass construction. But what makes this monitor so unique is the absence of any cooling fans. The whole rear of the monitor is a heat sink designed to disperse the heat from the monitor. In the center of the rear of the monitor, we have a Sony MPF battery mount. And we also have a release button for this style of battery on the rear right hand side. The lack of any cooling fans is definitely a positive if you're recording audio at the same time as using an external monitor as long as the monitor doesn't overheat so we'll be testing that out later in the video right let's mount this monitor on top of our sony fx30 and take a look at all of its built-in features i'll be using a battery to power the monitor but i could power it via the usb-c port or using a power adapter into the dc input if need be the cold tune monitor mount that comes supplied with this monitor feels high quality and in my opinion it's much better than the L-type brackets that come supplied with some monitors. Right let's plug in the HDMI cable and power this monitor on. Holding in the power button for two seconds on the side of the monitor turns on the monitor and once it's powered on the first thing I notice is just how stunning the image is coming from the monitor. It really is exceptional. Now if I turn off the HDMI info display from our camera, we get to utilize the full screen of this monitor. Now my initial thoughts of looking at this monitor is just how crisp and clear the image is. I'm pretty confident in saying that the monitor that I use day in and day out that costs twice as much as this Godox monitor doesn't give off the same kind of clarity or sharpness as this one does. So my initial thoughts are, I am very impressed. Now our cold shoe monitor mount can tilt backwards and forwards as you would expect, but it can also rotate left and right, which is really nice to see again. But let us take a look at some of the built-in features of this monitor. Now, just before we take a look at all the tools that are built into this monitor, I'm just gonna pause the video for a second, just so you can appreciate just how clear this monitor really is. As you can see, we're filming the box on the monitor through one camera, which is then being displayed on the monitor. I'm then filming that with a second camera. And as you can see, the image is absolutely stunning. Anyway, that's enough about the clarity. Let's take a look at some of the features and tools that are built into this device. And by pressing our menu button on top of the monitor, this opens up all our sub menus on the left hand side of our screen. The first one we can see is focus assist. And what this is, is normally referred to as focus peaking on most camera systems, and it shows us what's in focus. Our next sub menu is zebra stripes. And what this basically does is show us what areas in our image are overexposed, and thus we can get the correct exposure. Our next sub menu is waveforms, and this is so we can monitor all the parameters of our image. Now we get different meters that we can turn on and off individually, or you can select all of them to be on all at once. 
our next sub menu is LUTs and we apply these by using the SD card reader in the bottom of the monitor. It's very easy to use and I'll show you this later in the video. Our next sub menu is called Assist and in here we get crosshairs, grid lines and everything else to help you get the correct composition for your image. Now again these can be turned on and off individually or you can turn them all on all at once. It's also worth noting that you get multiple options in this menu. Everything from the amount of grids that you want and you can even change the colour of your grid lines. Very nicely done, Godox. Right, let's turn off all our grids just so we can see the screen again. And next we're going to be looking at the sub menu which is called Basics. And in this sub menu we get multiple options again. We get our audio meter, our false color, which is again very handy if you're looking to get correct exposure. You can also change the screen to monochrome and select individual colors. We also get pixel to pixel. And we get the zoom function, which is very handy to have. And as you've noticed, this is a touchscreen monitor. And to move around our zoomed image, we either swipe left, right, up or down. We also get different magnifications of zoom, which can be selected at the bottom of the screen. Our next sub menu is display. And in here we get all the settings that we can change in regards to the monitor itself. We get color space, brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, RGB, or we can reset it back to factory default. And our final sub menu is called system. And this is where we get all the system information in regards to the monitor. And in here we get user settings, language, battery tip, volume, backlight, shortcuts, camera control, which I'm gonna be showing you in a moment, image flip, restore factory, upgrade and power down. Now the quick switch buttons on top of the monitor can be changed to your liking but by default F1 is set up as camera control on or off which I'm going to be showing you in a second. F2 is set up for our LUT switch either on or off again. F3 by default is our focus peaking or focus assist and by default F4 is set up for our false colour either on or off. And F5 is set up for our centre marker either on or off as well. But like I say, all these buttons are completely customizable to your own personal preference. Now by quickly pressing the power button, locks our touch screen or unlocks our touch screen. Right, let's take a look at a camera control function built into this monitor. Now I've been opening up the menu by tapping the menu button on top of the monitor. But if you double tap the screen, this also opens up our menu. Now by going to system and then selecting camera control, and making sure this is turned on. We can now swipe from left to right on our monitor screen and this opens up a whole new feature that allows us to control our camera settings from the monitor. Now you will need to purchase an additional cable depending on what camera you're using and Godox sell these for roughly £20. And then you take the jack end of the cable, plug it into the remote port on the monitor and then the other end into your camera. We can now control certain aspects of our camera straight from our monitor. For example, we can start or stop the recording. We can also tell the camera to focus. We can also adjust the camera's ISO. It's aperture. And it's shutter speed. Now I would just like to point out that with my Sony FX30, whilst I can start and stop the recording function via the monitor, cannot change the ISO, aperture or shutter speed via the monitor. I'm not sure why this is, maybe this is a menu setting in the FX30, or maybe it needs a firmware update on the monitor from Godox. If I find out later how I can do this, I'll let you know in the comment section below, so keep an eye out for that. Next I'll be showing you how to import LUTs onto the monitor, and this is one of the only negatives with this Godox monitor. You see the SD card slot is positioned on the bottom of the monitor which means it's hard to get to. Plus it has a rubber cover that is hard to remove. But once you've removed this, you just simply insert the SD card into the bottom of the monitor, making sure your LUTs are pre-installed onto your SD card. You then power back on the monitor, 
go to your LUT setting in the menu, select LUT manage and then click on import. This will show you the LUTs that are on your SD card. Select the ones that you want to import and again click import. Come back out of this menu and then when you're ready to load up your LUT, reselect LUT in the menu, go to LUT load and these are all the LUTs that you've imported onto the monitor and choose the one you wish to view over your image. Now we can view the results of our LUT by simply clicking on LUT load. We can either toggle it on or off. Not forgetting also that we have the quick switch buttons on the top of the monitor as a shortcut way of loading up your LUTs. It's worth me mentioning because this monitor is not a recorder that the LUTs are just previewed onto the footage and are not baked into your recordings. Now for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be using this monitor on a daily basis, finding out all of its good points, all of its bad points, and whether it's something that you should consider buying or is it something that you should be avoiding. Right, it's been two weeks of me using this monitor, so we'll start off with some of its negatives. The first being it doesn't come supplied with a battery, which means you've got to spend a little bit more money to buy a battery. The second negative is it would have been nice of Godox to supply the remote cable that you have to purchase separately, but I can understand why they haven't because different camera models require different cables. So we'll mark them down half a point for that. The third negative is the Sunhood mount and the Sunhood itself, which both feel like a little bit of an afterthought and isn't of the same quality, I believe, as the monitor itself. The Sunhood is very flimsy and like I said, just seems like a little bit of an afterthought. Now the monitor does have a brightness of 1200 nits which is extremely bright and can be viewed even in the brightest of sunlight. So the sun hood really isn't needed. So again we're going to mark them down half a point for the sun hood. So that's the only negatives I can find with this monitor. Let's now take a look at its good points and what I truly think of this monitor. Now coming in at £300 this is not the cheapest monitor on the market but it's also not the most expensive. But what Godox has done is actually very clever. They've focused on the things that really matter on an external monitor. Things like clarity, colour reproduction, screen brightness and features. And we're going to release this monitor at the £300 price point. And we're going to make sure that it outperforms monitors that are twice, if not three times more expensive. The price for this monitor compared to its performance is simply staggering. There really is not a monitor on the market that performs as well as this one does at this price point. Using this monitor for the last couple of weeks has been an absolute pleasure. So much so that I've ditched my more expensive monitor and the Godox is with me now all the time. So not only does it come highly recommended, but if you're looking to improve your filmmaking, then this is one of them products that you know you can invest in and you're getting the best bang for buck. You won't need to be upgrading anytime soon. And I think that's going to conclude this review of the Godox GM6S monitor. I'll leave links to it in the description below and in the top pinned comment. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see further videos from myself, please hit that subscribe button, tickle the bell, and we'll catch up in the next video. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll catch up soon. Oh, and whilst you're here, why don't you check out this video also? See you soon everybody.